In the previous movie, we constrained our camera's position to follow Servo. In this movie, we'll build on this by implementing a camera orbit constraint. Open the level's servo camera from your current project. You can also use the files provided with this movie by merging them into a new Stingray project. We can determine the camera's position around the world origin using different trigonometry formulas. For example, to calculate a position around the z-axis, we could use the following equations. This position can also be expressed in spherical coordinates using the camera's distance from the origin, an azimuthal angle, theta, and a polar angle, phi. By controlling these two angles, we can compute the resulting position with the following equations. Once Stingray moves the camera, we can apply the aim constraint we created in part 2 of this series to orient it towards servo. Let's start with calculating the radius, which is the distance between the camera and servo, its orbit origin. We can find this using the position offset flow graph we've used before in our aim and position constraints. Copy the necessary nodes into the level flow tab and then connect the result to a vector length node to calculate its magnitude or orbit radius. Store the value into a set numeric variable node. Set its name to radius. Group your flow graph as set camera orbit radius. Next, build a flow graph based on these trigonometry equations, starting with the position on the x-axis. Use a get numeric variable node to retrieve the orbit radius. Don't forget to set its variable name to match its sister node. Group these nodes together as convert to x position. Duplicate the group twice. Update the new flow graphs based on the trigonometry equations to determine the position on the y and z axes. Once all three flow graphs are set up, combine their outputs using a vector from components node. Next, we need to increment the cos and sine node values at every frame to create the camera orbit motion. Create a counter node, then group it by itself and rename it theta. Connect it to all the corresponding flow graph nodes based on the trigonometry equations. Duplicate the group and rename it phi. Connect it to the remaining flow graph nodes. Both counter nodes are set to increment by 1 on every frame, which means our camera will automatically orbit based on the increasing values of phi and theta. For now, we'll just test the rotation around the z-axis driven by theta, so set the phi counter node's increment port to 0. Connect the vector from components node's vector output to a set camera local position node. We need a sequence node to ensure that Stingray evaluates the radius variable before the rest of the flow graph. Also, insert a once node to prevent Stingray from evaluating the variable more than once. Disconnect the position constraint flow subroutine node from the level update node so it doesn't interfere with our current orbit constraint. Instead, connect the level update node to this aim constraint flow subroutine node so the camera points at servo while orbiting. Test your level to validate your changes. The camera doesn't seem to be orbiting, instead it just looks down at servo. 
This is due to Phi's default value. In spherical coordinates, Phi ranges from 0 to 180 degrees, starting from the top of the z-axis. We can adjust this by setting the Phi counter node's start value port to a larger angle. Test your level once more. The camera orbits around the world's origin while aiming at Servo. To offset the camera orbit to follow Servo, insert an addition node between the Vectors from Components node and the Set Camera Local Position nodes. Use Servo's position as an offset by connecting the Get Unit World Position node. Test your level to validate your changes. The camera properly orbits around Servo as it moves in the level. Now to make this orbit interactive, we'll use a game controller thumbstick node to drive both counter nodes increment ports. This way, each counter node's increment will range from negative 1 to 1, based on the corresponding thumbstick vector component. Connect the vector component's node's X port to the theta counter node and its Y port to the phi counter node. Test your level to validate your changes. Move the right thumbstick to orbit the camera around Servo. Let's finalize this orbit constraint flow graph by converting it to a flow subroutine. Create an external input unit node to connect the necessary camera and target units, as well as an external in-event node. Connect them to the new flow graph. Create an external input vector 3 node to connect to the input control. We can also embed the camera aim constraint as a flow subroutine. Connect it to the set camera local position node instead of the external in event node so that Stingray evaluates the camera's aim after it moves into position. Also, insert an update unit node between them so Stingray evaluates the camera's position before the aim constraint reads it. Otherwise, leaving it as is can cause camera jitters at high orbit speeds. This is because Stingray resolves the world space transforms of objects only once per frame, while the local transforms can be updated multiple times per frame. Save your flow graph in your local script folder as camera orbit constraint. Return to the level flow tab and load your new flow into a flow subroutine node. Group the flow subroutine node by itself as camera orbit constraint. Test your level to validate your changes. With the techniques you learned in this series, you can create additional camera controls fine-tuned to your game. As an example, we've included an updated version of this orbit constraint in the files provided with this movie. This version supports both mouse and game controller inputs, as well as customizable orbit speed, inverted controls, and matching the camera orbit to your camera's initial position.